I don't usually <laughs> film or photograph my outfits outdoors or in public places because I'm just too nervous. But today was just too perfect. And so I enlisted the help of my husband, Alan. <laughs> and he is being my photographer and videographer today so that we can get some awesome shots of this jacket, which turned out amazing. I'm so excited about it. Well, hello there, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Casey, and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. In addition to designing women's sewing patterns, I also occasionally embark on ambitious sewing projects and share the process here. As always, if you enjoy the tutorial, be sure to hit subscribe. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Today, I'm gonna show you how I put together my puffy coat from scratch. We're not using blankets here, folks. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a great way to reuse and repurpose supplies, but if you wanna make a puffy coat from scratch, quilt all your own pattern pieces, I'm gonna show you everything I did to make this coat. I made my first puffy coat. Yeah, my first one, this is number two. I made my first puffy coat about two years ago. And at the time I was really frustrated when I was trying to learn how to do this because most of the posts and videos that I found online were suggesting to repurpose a quilted blanket or a sleeping bag. And I wanted to know how to do it from scratch because I just, I just did. I just wanted to do it all myself because that's just who I am. But I couldn't find a lot of resources on that. First of all, for this project, I'm not gonna be going into great detail on how I drafted this coat. I'm gonna be focusing mainly on the construction details and techniques that relate to working with a quilted shell and nylon fabric. You can do this technique on just about any coat pattern, but I do recommend choosing something that is fairly simple. For my first puffy coat, I used the Closet Core Patterns Claire Coat, and I think that's a great pattern to use if you wanna try it. It's just got a very simple silhouette. There's not a ton of top stitching detailing, things like that, so that's a really great pattern to use if you don't wanna draft your own pattern. Now the batting is going to take up a couple of inches of ease in your coat. If you think about it, I mean, the batting is going to be, who knows, a quarter inch thick or even a half inch thick, depending on how, ma how many layers you put in there. And you're going to want to size up at least, I would say at least two sizes, maybe three, uh, to make this fit very comfortably and be able to not feel like you're stuffed in there like a little sausage. I ran into sizing issues on both my first puffy coat and on this puffy coat. So yeah, size up. The fabric that I used for this coat is called Hyper D and it is a 1.6 ounce ripstop nylon that I picked up at Ripstop by the Roll. I really like working with this fabric. It's a lot softer to me than other ripstop nylon fabrics. It's a little bit easier to work with. And I ended up using almost five yards of that nylon for the interior of the jacket for the lining. I just used flannel for the front and back bodice pieces and then I used the nylon for the sleeves and the facings of the jacket. For the batting, I just used quilt batting that I picked up at Joann Fabrics, and I ended up using multiple layers of the batting. I've put links in the description below to all of the supplies and materials that I'm talking about and any other resources that I think might be relevant to this tutorial. Okay, so I'm gonna get more in detail on all of this in the tutorial, so let's just get started. I made myself this little jacket about a week ago and I'm gonna be basing my coat off of this jacket pattern. So I'm just measuring it to make sure that I get the length that I want and I'll add that length to the pattern piece here before I cut out my pieces. I'm first cutting the pieces out of my ripstop nylon that I picked up. I'm doing two front bodice pieces mirrored and here I'm just showing you how I lengthen that pattern piece for the bodice and then cut out the piece and I only lengthened the front and back bodice pieces. I'll be quilting all of my pattern pieces with this quilt batting, and I used Polyfill Feather Loft quilt batting that I picked up at Joann Fabrics. And to cut out the pieces, I just loosely laid the pattern pieces on top of the batting, pinned it in place, and then used my rotary cutter to quickly cut around, and I wasn't too precise with it. I did two layers of batting for each of the bodice pieces and the sleeves. For now, I'll just be quilting the sleeves, both sides of the front bodice and the back bodice. I also have a collar piece that will be quilted and a hood that will be quilted, but I'm gonna save those for later. I removed all of those batting pieces from the main pattern pieces to draw on my quilt lines. I did try it with the batting 
same pieces on there, but it was a little bit harder to do, so I had to remove those. For the front bodice, I lined the two pieces up so that I could make them perfectly symmetrical, and then I used the back bodice at the side seam just to make sure that I got those quilt lines to line up at the side seam as well, and then I drew those on at the same time. I also attempted to line up the sleeve with the bottom of the arm side to mark that first quilt line location. It didn't quite work out, but I think it was because of a change that I made a little later that I'll show you later. I'm using a Chaco liner to mark all of my lines. For this project, I'm going to be using Microtex needles. It's a very fine needle, it's very sharp, and it's gonna leave really small holes in each of those stitch lines. Um, I'm gonna start with the 7010. I've also got an 8012 just in case I feel like my fabric is a little bit too hefty with the batting. And I'm just using a regular um, Guterman thread. It's just their polyester thread that I'm using for all of the top stitching and all of the coat construction. Now I can start quilting my pattern pieces. So I repinned all of the batting back onto the nylon pieces. I just used pins around the edge within the seam allowance. And I'm using my lines that I drew as a reference for quilting the pieces. And as I go along, I'm sort of rolling up the end of the pattern piece underneath my sewing machine. When I got about halfway, it got a little too bulky. So I'll just rotate the piece around to the other side so that I get those last two lines quilted onto the piece. Once all my pieces were quilted, I took them over to the serger and just cleaned up all of the edges of the pattern pieces to trim off the excess batting and make these easier to work with when I start constructing the coat. Here's my back bodice, two front bodice pieces, and the sleeves all quilted. Then I just attached the front and back bodice pieces together at the shoulders with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Just wanted to put this on to make sure I like the length, which I do. And I also um, want to locate where I'm going to put some pockets. So I'm actually going to be doing welt pockets. I'm going to try that out on this coat. And so they're going to actually be on the surface of the front bodice. Right now this seems like kind of stiff, but I'm hoping that once I get everything sewn together, it'll kind of start to take a better shape. First, I marked a diagonal straight line right in the center of each of the front bodice pieces that is seven inches long. Then I cut out two strips of fabric, one for each pocket that is nine inches wide and 27 inches long. I marked a rectangle that is one and a half inches wide by seven inches long with the center an inch and a half from the top. Then I added a three inch wide strip of batting to the pocket bag that is lined up with the bottom of that window that I just drew. And this is gonna act as interfacing for the welt. I lined up the center line of that little window that I drew with the line that I drew on the bodice for the pocket opening. And I'm gonna sew two parallel lines along the long sides of that rectangle for the top and bottom of the pocket opening. And that's a little bit easier to see from the wrong side. You can see my two lines there and I'm just trimming my threads. I made sure to be very precise when I sewed these lines going right to the very corner of those pockets because I want it to be perfect. Now I'm folding that interfaced portion of the pocket bag in half exactly. And this is gonna create the welt for the welt pocket. And this is gonna be the exposed part of the welt. So I'm pinning those edges together and I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and just base those ends in place to keep that welt in place. And this will make it easier for me to attach later and I'm making sure that I keep the bodice folded out of the way when I sew that. Now I need to cut open the pocket window. So I'm gonna cut right in the center here of those two lines that I sewed earlier. First, I'll fold this in half and cut a little pilot hole. Then I'll slip my scissors in, cut almost to the end. I'm only cutting up to about an inch away from the end of that pocket window that I drew. And then I'm gonna cut diagonally to the end of those lines that I drew and I'm cutting right up to the stitch line without going through it. Here's how that looks up close. And you can see I got right up to that corner and that will allow me to fold that piece in. So I need to trim out this batting. This is a little bit too bulky and I wanna get all of that out of there. So I'm flipping this over. I'm just gonna trim the batting only and make sure that I'm not trimming off any of the nylon of my exterior fabric. And here's how that looks close up from the exterior with all of the batting trimmed away. Now I just need to stuff the pocket bag and the welt through that window that I cut open. And you can see how that welt just fits perfectly inside there and I'll flip this over so that I can access the pocket construction from the back. So looking at this from the wrong side, I've got the pocket bag flipped to the wrong side and as straight as possible. This is gonna be the welt. This is the part that we sewed down on the ends in a previous step. So now what we wanna do is tack the side of the welt here to these little triangles and the side of the pocket bag up here so that that's all nice and neat. We're gonna tack that with one, one seam along here to make that nice neat edge. So I'm gonna move the 
bodice piece out of the way so that I'm only sewing the edge of the pocket and that welt. And this takes a little bit of finagling and it's honestly kind of a pain in the ass, but hopefully it'll look good when it's all done. So you want to get right up to the edge of that pocket, make sure all of this is all of this is pulled out of the way under here. And then I'm putting my needle down right at the top there. Let me scoot that pin out just a little bit. And I'm gonna sew across there. Do a little secure tack. And I wanna make sure that when I sew, I sew straight down here and keep this nice and even. So you can see that's tacked there. It's tacked across there. And here's how that looks with both sides stitched down. Um, you can see that secure there looks pretty good. Now I can finish the pocket bag. I kind of wish I would have placed my window a little bit lower down in the pocket bag. This would make this next step a little easier, but basically you want to flip up the bottom of the pocket bag and line it up with the top of the pocket bag and sew around the perimeter. And I have a little excess here that hangs off the edge. I will trim that off later. And again, I am moving the bodice out of the way as I'm sewing this because I only want to sew the pocket bag to itself and not to the bodice. So now you can see how that pocket works. I'll do the same thing for the opposite front bodice pocket and then I will attach the front bodice to the back bodice again at the shoulder seams because I removed it so I could install the pockets and I'm actually going to top stitch the seam allowance down on both of the shoulder seams just to make it a little bit neater there and make sure that it lays nice and flat which you can see here. After I attach the front and back bodice together I can attach the sleeves and I'm just lining that up along the arm side and pinning in place and I'll sew that again with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once I get both of the sleeves attached I will line up the sleeve seam and the side seam and sew those all in one seam. Starting at the wrist and moving down to the jacket hem. Okay, so after trying on the jacket, um, I think it's a little too snug in the hips, mainly in the hips, and the sleeves are okay, but I think I'd be happier if I had a little extra there. Um, this is exactly the same thing I ran into with my first puppy coat, so I just didn't size up enough, and it was just really snug, and I had to take it apart and kind of add ease in some places, and it still ended up a little bit more snug than I would like, and that's probably my biggest... Um, issue with that coat now. I feel like I'm gonna just like bust the seams wide open on the back. So that's a problem. <laughs> so I want to make sure that I don't have that same issue with this new coat. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit of ease by adding a strip of fabric from the sleeve all the way down the side seam. And I've done this before with jeans <laughs> and it turned out really cool actually and it ended up being kind of a design feature. Um, so I think for this I'm going to do the same thing and try to make it look intentional like I meant to do that. <laughs> I might take a little break from it today. Maybe. I don't know. Depends on how I feel in the next five minutes. So yeah, I couldn't walk away. I went ahead and seam ripped open the side seams of the jacket so that I could sew in those strips of fabric. And then I just measured down the sleeve and the bodice to get an overall length of these strips because I'm going to do it all in one strip. And then I created two strips, one for each side that tapered from about two and a half inches to about, I think three and a half inches, almost four inches at the bottom, which gave me about an inch of extra ease in the sleeve and about four inches overall extra ease in the bodice. And you can see as I'm sewing through this batting, I'm kind of pushing it under the presser foot so it doesn't get hung up. Now I can move on to the lining and I'm using flannel for the lining, but you can see it's not really lining up quite right. So I need to block my fabric. So I'm just ripping the fabric along the grain. I wanna make sure that I do a little clip so I can just get right in there along the grain line of the fabric. And I'm just gonna stretch the fabric diagonally to try to sort of unwarp it and kind of get it to a more square rectangular shape so that it's nice and even for cutting. Once I did that, I cut out my front and back bodice pieces out of the flannel. And for the front bodice, I separated it into two pieces. So I have a piece for the lining and I created a piece for a facing out of the nylon. And my nylon facing is about four and a half inches wide. And I've cut two of those mirrored to go with the two front bodice pieces. Next, I want to interface those facings with some more of my batting. I just did a single layer of batting and I attached it to the nylon pieces in the same way that I did the other pattern pieces by serging around all of the edges. Once I have the facings attached to the bodice pieces, I'm just gonna edge stitch the seam allowance down to the bodice side. 
just to keep that nice and neat along that edge. For the back bodice lining, I actually added about an inch of extra ease and created a pleat at the neckline so that it allows me to kind of move within the jacket a little bit more easily. Once I get that pleat sewn in, I'm just going to attach the front and back bodice together the same way I did for the jacket exterior. And then I'll also attach the sleeves the same way. And so the side seams the exact same way. So I won't show you that whole process again. You get the idea. Okay, so I've got the lining tried on and so I'm gonna put some pockets on the interior of the coat right under the bust so that it is kind of like tucked in there. If there's a little extra bulk, it doesn't add bulk to the bust. It kind of is hidden underneath the bust. I just cut two rectangles for each, one in the plaid fabric, which will be the interior, and one in the nylon, which will be the exterior of the pocket. And then um, I sewed those two pieces together all the way around and left a little opening at the bottom so that I could turn it, trimmed all of my edges, and then turned it right side out. I'll finish up this edge here once I sew the pocket to the jacket lining. And I'm actually planning to make at least one of these um, have two sections. So in one side I can put my phone and the other side I can put my glasses when I am out and about. And here's how they look attached to the lining. And I kind of overlapped the facing just a little bit, but you can see I've got a pocket for my phone and a pocket for my glasses. For the hood, I created a quilted outer layer and then a non-quilted inner lining layer. Sewed those together, wrong sides together, and then flipped it right side out and sewed around the perimeter to top stitch and finish the edges. Then I attached the hood to the bodice, right sides together, first aligning the center back and then pinning around the neckline to attach the hood to the neckline. And it's gonna be just a little bit short of the center front of the bodice. I sewed that together. Once the hood was sewn in place, I attached my stand collar. So this is just a strip of fabric that I'm gonna use for the stand collar. I attached it along the neckline on top of the hood to sandwich the hood between the collar and the jacket body. So I made my stand collar a little bit extra tall because I wasn't sure exactly how long I wanted it to be. I wanted to try it on first. So I used a pen to kind of mark where I wanted the top of that to be. Now I can install my zipper and I'm just trimming the little hard plastic part just on this one side. It's the left side when worn. I wanted to trim that off before I pinned it to the zipper and I pinned it all along the front and I'll sew that to the front bodice right sides together. Now I created this little placket that's gonna go behind the zipper once the zipper is installed and I'm attaching that on top of the zipper and folding the end over the top part of the zipper. That'll make sense later. I'm also pinning the pocket bag to this and I'm gonna sew this all together at once and I'll trim that pocket bag later. So you can see I'm using a zipper foot here to get pretty close to the zipper underneath and I'm just, going slowly and sewing this entire placket to the zipper. And you can see here at the top where it's folded over. This little placket will help protect the zipper from getting caught on my clothing. And it will also protect my neck from the top of the zipper being folded over like this. Now I can reattach the other side of the zipper onto the side that's sewn in. And this is gonna help me line up that zipper with the opposite side. So I'm flipping the bodice inside out so that I can align the two sides of the center front and pin that zipper in place. And I'm only pinning the zipper tape to the edge of the bodice here. And I'll pin it in the same way. Um, I wanna make sure that I line up those seams for the stand collar on either side of the zipper and also line up all of the seams of the quilting that I created earlier. So I want everything to line up really nice and neat. I'm taking my time making sure that all of this lines up perfectly along that zipper before I sew it in to the bodice. And I left the little hard plastic part on this side of the zipper. I'm just gonna fold that down and sew it down folded under. So that'll be concealed in the seam allowance once I sew on the lining of the jacket. So you can see here how the zipper looks all sewn in. I've still got a little bit of excess at the top of the collar. That'll be trimmed off later. Now I can attach the lining of the jacket to the shell of the jacket. So I've got the exterior of the shell laying face up and I've got the lining face down and I'm attaching those along that zipper edge. Again, with my zipper foot, just sewing right along there to attach the lining to the exterior of the bodice. And I did this on both sides of the zipper, both sides of that center front to attach the lining. I also sewed across the top of the stand collar there. You can see here, I'm gonna remove about two and a half inches from that stand collar because I made it way too tall. So I'm just using my scissors to trim that down. And I'm also gonna trim my corners and try to remove as much bulk from that collar as I can before I turn it. 
Next, I'm gonna clip into the seam allowance where the collar and the hood are attached to the neckline of the jacket. This is just gonna allow that curved line of the neckline to kind of open up a little bit better and be a little more flexible. And then I went through and kind of zhuzhed up all of the batting on the interior of the jacket to make it a little more floofy. Once I got the jacket turned right side out, I lined up the seam of each side of that collar stand. I'm just gonna go in there and tack that together to keep it in place with just a little short tacking stitch. I'm also going to go down the edge of the zipper on either side and do a top stitch just to keep that fabric from getting caught in the zipper. And I'm starting right at the bottom of the zipper and continuing all the way up the edge. Now this took me a little while because it's a lot of fabric to go through, but just take your time. I'm making sure that I'm pulling that fabric away from the zipper as I top stitch that in place just to make sure that nothing's getting caught in the zipper later when I'm actually wearing the jacket and I went all the way up to the end of the zipper at the top of the collar stand. And you can see how much nicer that looks because it's just a much more finished look and it'll be a lot easier to zip. Okay, so I also had to remove some of the stitching at the bottom where I sewed in that placket because I didn't really finish the bottom of that placket well. So I released that. I've got it sandwiched between the facing and the exterior of the jacket. And I'm just gonna fold that down and stitch that into the seam allowance when I finish the bottom of this facing edge. So I stitched that, I'm trimming all of the excess stuff out of the way before I turn this and trimming my corners. And then when you turn it right side out, you can see that that's nicely concealed. Now I wanna go through and create a hem at the bottom of the jacket. And I'm using my quilting line that I created. It was about an inch away from the bottom as a place to fold. And you can see I've got that all stitched down at the bottom of the jacket to finish that. Now I just need to attach my lining to the bottom of the jacket. I'm going to do this with a hand stitch. There are different ways that you can attach a lining, but since I didn't really plan ahead well, I decided to just go ahead and hand stitch this to the bottom hem of the jacket. So I'm doing what's called a ladder stitch, where I pick up one stitch from one side and then switch over to the other side of the lining, pick up a stitch, switch back to the jacket side of the hem, pick up a stitch, and just keep going in that way until I get the whole thing stitched together. And this actually doesn't take that long. Every time I do this, I think it's gonna take me forever, but it actually went pretty quick. Just watched a movie and enjoyed the process. And then once I got to a stopping point where I needed to change thread, I just created a little knot by looping it through several times. And then I poked that through the lining and pulled it through before snipping the thread. Now the thread will be hidden on the inside of the lining. And when I'm doing this, I like to work with kind of shorter lengths of thread just to make it more manageable. So I did that along the entire bottom of the jacket, making sure to only pick up the inside of the hem. Then I went through and just finished that top stitching along the hem to top stitch the bottom of the facing down to the jacket. My sleeves unhemmed were exactly the length that I wanted them to be. So I decided to create a tiny cuff along the bottom of the sleeve by sewing a strip of interfaced fabric right sides together with the sleeve opening. And then I turned that right side out and then turned the end under to create a little half inch cuff. And then I just turned that over to the right side and stitched in the ditch, stitched right in that seam there, all the way around to tack that fold down on the interior. And so now it looks very similar to the bottom of the jacket for kind of continuing that consistent detail. Now I've got the jacket turned inside out with the sleeve lining pulled down and folded under and I just use the same ladder stitch to attach that sleeve lining to the cuff and conceal all of those kind of ugly insides. For a finishing touch I decided to add a little bit of faux fur to my hood and instead of cutting it I just created a little notch and ripped the fur along the grain line to cut it down to size. This strip is about six inches wide and about 30 inches long I think. And then I'm not thrilled with how I attached this to the hood, but I just kind of tacked it on. I folded it over the edge of the hood opening and tacked it in place in several places. I have another idea for how I want to attach this later. I just have a few more supplies to get and I will share that either here or on Instagram later. But for now, this thing is done and I am ready to show it off. I don't usually <laughs> film or photograph my outfits outdoors or in public places because I'm just too nervous. But today was just too perfect. And so I enlisted the help of my husband, Alan. <laughs> and he is being my photographer and videographer today so that we can get some awesome shots of this jacket. 
course turned out amazing. I'm so excited about it. So I wanted to share just a few takeaways from this finished coat. First of all, I love the jacket. I'm so happy with how it came out. It's like wearing a sleeping bag. I mean, come on, you can't get any better than that. I also really love all of the pockets. So I love making outerwear, but one of my biggest beefs with making outerwear is that the pockets are just never big enough. Like they're never big enough. And I have enlarged pockets slightly every time I make a new coat. This time I feel like I finally got it right. I love that I have pockets on the inside that are kind of tucked under my bust and it just works really well. That part, I nailed it. I've got a pocket for everything. My wallet, my keys, my phone, my glasses, my sunglasses, my Joanne coupons, and my mask. I'll be so glad when we don't have to wear the masks anymore, but now I've got a pocket for it and that makes me happy. I'm also really happy with how the little sizing trick that I added came out. I think it does look like a little design feature in the coat and it worked out perfectly. I do want to revisit the way that I attached that fur to the hood. And I was watching the DIY designer the other day. She's another creator here on YouTube who does awesome projects. And she has a method for attaching fur trims and collars to jackets using magnets, which is genius. So I just have to get the supplies for that. And I think I'm gonna do something similar with my fur trim. One thing I will note is I think I probably could have gotten a little bit puffier silhouette on my puffy coat if I had used maybe a down filling or a down alternative. But I knew that that was gonna be super messy and it was gonna be a little bit harder to sort of get a consistent puff throughout the jacket. So I did opt for the batting for that reason. And I'll put a couple of links below to some places where I was looking at those as options if you wanna check that out for yourself. If you did wanna go that route, I would recommend quilting the nylon to some sort of backing material, maybe more nylon, and then stuffing the filling in after the fact before you sew the whole jacket together. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that if you've been wanting to make a puffy coat, this has empowered you to go out and do it. It's a big project, I'm not gonna lie. And by the end of this project, I was just ready to be done with it, which is why I like kind of haphazardly sewed that fur onto the hood. But it's so rewarding. It's such a rewarding project. All right, folks, I think that is it from me today. If you liked this video, please be sure to subscribe. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought or what you'd like to see next, or if there's any questions that you had that I didn't answer in the video. I will see you in the next video. Bye.